Hey guys, welcome uh, to the Bass East chat. We're running a little bit late. We had some technical difficulties, but uh, finally we got this thing set up. We've got the 2015 Bass National Championship on the line with us, Paul Mueller. What's going on, Paul? Hey man, what's up? What's happening? Not much, man. Just trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, hey, two years in a row, you made it to the big show. Obviously, you got something very special going on. Yeah, I've been I've been really blessed. You know, uh, the Lord has blessed me uh, very hard to get to the classic, especially through the nation. A lot of steps. Uh, you know, got to beat a lot of good anglers in your state to make a state team. And there you go to a divisional. You got to be the top guy in your state to go to the national, and then in the national, you got to be the top guy in your division to go to the classic. So it is. Uh, it's it's definitely a, a hard road to get there, but I'm. Uh, I'm very happy that I punched my ticket back to the Classic and uh, also got that uh, invite for the Elite Series next year, which is really cool. Totally unexpected. My my whole goal this year was to get back to the Classic. And, um, you know, in, in that national championship, I was I didn't care what place I finished as long as it was high, high enough uh, to win the Eastern Division. So uh, everything else, winning that tournament and, and getting the uh, – Qualification into elites is that's uh, an added bonus. So well, we'll get to the elite part here in a little bit. Uh, I, obviously, you know, you guide, you fish a lot, but let's talk a little bit about how you get to the level you're at, some of the techniques you utilize, and I know there's some other special things that that you attribute to your success. Yeah, you know, uh, time on the water is definitely an important thing, and I've been uh, very blessed to have an opportunity to to guide and to be on the water day in day out, um, you know, uh, and just develop. You know, you, not only you develop your mechanics, but you develop the thought process of, of figuring out fish. And you know, I I owe everything to God. I mean, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Especially, you know, making it to the classing and and, and competing at that high level. Uh, there's so many things that have to go right, and, uh, you know, my faith is my backbone. You know, there's definitely a lot of hard work that goes into it, but uh, without God, I wouldn't be here. And, uh, you know, the time on the water is something that, uh, you know, it, it's necessary to succeed in this sport. You know, I learned how to fish. To, when I started bass fishing, I was a fast power fisherman, and then uh, one of my friends in school, his father was a very good fisherman from from down south, uh, from Georgia, and he, he gave me some great advice. He said, if you ever want to do well in bass fishing, you got to learn how to fish a jig and fish slow. So I got into a phase where, you know, that's all I did is I fished slow, and then I found out that I was not the proper thing that you need to, to find fish to cover water, and, and so I've kind of gone back into that power fishing again. I, I've fallen in love with, with power fishing. I love to throw crankbaits. I love to to fish fast, but I also like to fish slow. So it's kind of like the there's you always got to find your balance, to, uh, you know, depending on where you are and stuff. But uh, you know, I think covering water is a big key on on you know when you're on an unfamiliar body of water, and and uh, it's something I love to do. So uh, I'm, I'm you know I'm a student of the game. I'm I'm still learning a lot. I got my work cut out for me this year against those guys on the elite series, and especially on some of those bodies of water I've never been to. So. The, it's going to be a, a, a big learning curve, but I'm looking forward to it. You know, great fisheries. It's gonna it's gonna be an awesome uh, schedule. You're gonna see a lot of big fish weighed in, and uh, it's gonna be pretty cool to be fishing against uh, some of the guys that I grew up watching on TV. It's gonna be surreal. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Paul, let's talk a little bit about uh, your go-to technique. You know, you, you've got to be versatile to do as well as you do, but there's got to be a you know a couple special little techniques that you would prefer to throw. Um, can you kind of share that with with everybody? Yeah, I mean, um, I consider probably my two biggest strengths, or maybe I'll give it three. My three biggest strengths. My my number one strength is throwing a crankbait. And I love to do that. Something I've just it's a passion of mine. Uh, and that all started from the Bass University back in the day, the old the, the original Bass University when. You had guys like Jay Yellis and, and uh, Denny Brower and David Fritz and, and all those guys. I mean, they had a, just an incredible lineup, and, and they're building that now. They, 
the lineup that they have in the New Bass University, they're they're bringing it back to where it was. So it's pretty cool to see that they brought that back um, because it, it it is something that really helped me when I was learning and, and just trying to – I was so eager to learn all these different techniques. And I remember seeing David Fritz at an old Bass University up in Massachusetts, and he was talking about crankbaits, and he went in-depth on how he approaches – lakes and and uh, just the little things about crankbaits that that make it uh, that make them work and and how you can apply them to lakes you fish and I I kind of fell in love with that and it's just that's my primary I would say my primary strength but I also like to fish it you know drop shot and and the jig you know I mean so it's kind of weird that you know and I like to fish fa fast with a crankbait I think with a crankbait I'm able to uh, break down and dissect water a lot faster so I always try to make that work if I can. But I do like to fish slow. I mean, uh, being from Connecticut and, and we have a lot of cold uh, cold weather up here and, and, and deep water, um, I cherish the days like now when we, we don't have quite ice on the lake, but the water's cold, the fish have slowed down, and you just got to take a Punisher hair jig and just soak it for what it's worth. And you might get six or seven bites out of the day, but they're going to be anywhere from three and a half to five and a half, six pounds. And, and, uh, you kind of get to get into that different mode. So I like fishing that way too. I, I consider it a strength, but you know, it's, it's kind of a deal with fishing is it's the hardest thing for me is like making that switch from like going fast to, to going slow and doing that in the same day. Cause you got to get to get into a routine or a rhythm when you're doing something. I think the guys that are really good are able to just, you know, fish real fast. And then when they have to slow down for that period of time, they do that. And, and, uh, it's something I'm still trying to hone right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I love fishing a crankbait. I love fishing a jig and, and finesse fishing, drop shots, shaky head, that type of stuff. So uh, hopefully I can utilize that stuff on Hartwell. Uh, and it, I think I might be able to. I'm, I'm going to surely look for it. You always got to look for your strengths when you're going to an unfamiliar body of water, you know. And, and Hartwell is, is going to be unfamiliar for me. I've only been on it one time. It was um, during the FLW uh, tour when I fished as a co-angler. And uh, it was when they were, uh, it was later in the year when they were actually uh, spawning. And, and uh, basically, I, I sat in the back of the boat and watched uh, my pros uh, sight fish all day and, and didn't really get to see the lake a whole lot. So, uh, you know, what I'm going to learn of that lake is going to be in the next month here before our, uh, our cutoff. And uh, I'm just going to go down there and just sit in that ranger and, and look around and, tr and try to find some areas that, that uh, hopefully will have some potential come tournament time. How about uh, how about talking about some tips or advice for you know young guys starting out that you know maybe want to be where you are one day? What you know, what's some key things you could tell tell the guys? Well, if you really love it, um, you know, there's no limit to what you can do. You know, I love to fish from from day one. My dad took me fishing when I was a little kid, and and he kind of put that passion in me. And, uh, I mean, I don't care what it is I'm fishing for. If it's a crappie or bass or pike, I mean, I like fishing for everything. But, you know, bottom line is, uh, you know, if you want to compete, um, if you put the for, – for one, you got to be willing to just sacrifice a lot. It takes a lot of sacrifice. Um, just put your time in on the water. Um, just uh, be ready for failure to come because, you know, it's, uh, fishing is a very humbling sport. You're going to have days where you just don't figure them out, and you're going to have tournaments where they don't, it doesn't go your way. But as long as you learn from uh, your mistakes and you learn from what you did wrong that day uh, and you build off it and you don't do it again, you're going to become a better angler. I think uh, for me, I've learned the most through tournaments where I fell short or through things where you know something came up and I didn't trust that instinct to change and switch up and, and kind of break – out of what I was doing in practice or and, and maybe a new pattern was emerging and I didn't you know follow it and those are t things that happen with with time on the water and experience so um, but the thing is you know if, if you, if you want to do it there's nobody saying that you can't and uh, like I said for me it's it's all about you know, I wouldn't be here without God so I, I believe you know um, all of, all my success has been after I really committed my life to to the Lord and uh, you know, that's my that's kind of my key for for all this is where I'm at. He put me in this arena, and and I'm I'm very blessed to to be here sitting and talking to you about it right now. 
be honest with you. Yeah, that's uh, you know, something that a lot of the top anglers attribute to their uh, success is their faith. So, uh, you know, you can only learn to cast so good. And, you know, once you get your head right, I think that's when you become dangerous. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that can go either way, you know. Uh, and I could tell you so many different so many different things. I mean, uh, first thing that comes to mind is is this last tournament, uh, the national championship. I didn't have a fish on the second day till nine o'clock, and it's you kind of get antsy, man, when you know you're you know you you gotta. Uh, it's an eight hour day, but uh, you know it took me an hour to get into the place, and it's about an hour to get out and to be conservative to get back on time, and so you know you have X amount of time to get it done. If you don't get it done. Uh, one bad day on that on that river, um, you wouldn't be able to bounce back from because it was such a tight uh, tournament, tight weights, and uh, you know everything has to go right. And and so whenever I'm in a uh, in a pinch like that, and and the things are looking bad, you know that's where my faith kind of carries me through it and and keeps me focused, keeps me positive too. Because you know fishing, there's a lot of times where you know you can get into a negative roll or you can let doubt creep in but uh, you know my faith is what cancels that doubt out you know I know God's in control I know that the thing that I need to do is just work as hard as I can and leave the results up to him and that's my formula and that's that's what's got me to you know to the classic this year and, and the classic last year and and finishing second you know that's that I figured out that formula and and uh, you know that that is that's why I'm here where I, you know where I am so uh, yeah, faith is a big thing for me you had something uh pretty daggone special happen in the in the classic last year on that final day, right? Yeah, yeah, it was uh the second. You maybe talk about the second day, the the thirty two pound. The second day when you had the big bag. Yeah, I mean, especially um, it was special in the sense that uh, you know, facing elimination this the second day after the end of the second day they they cut the field to twenty five to fish the third day. So uh, if you don't have enough weight. Uh, you're done, and uh, you know I was in 47th place going into the second day, and that's a pretty big deficit. Considering I only had like nine pounds the first day, it was a big deficit just to squeak in in 25th place, and that was my goal for that day. And it was just one of those examples of you know uh, God. God kind of just carried me through that day. It was it was a Unbelievable day. It actually was easy. You know, I, you know, I could tell that the people and they're like, how how could it be easy? It was one of the easiest days of fishing I've ever had. You know, just a blessed day. When when God works, it's just uh, just incredible things happen. And and uh, you know, I'll never forget that day. I never caught a, a bag of fish like that. I mean, we don't have fish that big in Connecticut. I mean, you might catch one uh, the size of, of one of the five in that bag, but uh, I caught my biggest fish and the five the biggest five fish stringer of my life on day two of the classic so it was it was very special <laughs> to say the least all right well we're not going to keep you a whole lot longer but I do have one uh, one question for you um if you had to choose between one small mouth large mouth or spot which would it be smallie man I'm a <laughs> I'm a small mouth guy too bad Hartwell doesn't have small mouth in it but I think the spotted bass have a tendency to be like small mouth sometimes uh so hopefully uh, I can use some of my smallmouth techniques to, to at least help me figure out how to catch those spots down at Hartwell. But I'm a smallmouth guy to the core, man. I love those brown brown bass, and and like you know I could I'd rather have a catch a seven or eight pound smallmouth than a fifteen or sixteen pound largemouth. And I think there'd probably be a lot of guys that disagree with that, but uh, I don't know. It's just something about those brown fish, man. They're cool. They're the meanest thing that swims. Period. I mean, I, I growing up I had them in, in fish tanks. Uh, with all every, you could put everything in a fish tank, and you could not put a smallmouth in there with them because it would kill every other fish. They're just pound for pound the meanest fish that that's in the lake. So, uh, and I love them. <laughs> they're awesome. They're they're uh, a lot of fun to catch. Well, let's uh let's just hit real quick on uh what tackle baits, lures, rods. Etc. Are you expecting to to play a part in your arsenal at Hartwell? Well, you know, uh, I'm gonna kind of bring my style of fishing to there, and and hopefully, and that's all what I always try to do any place I go. But I think Hartwell is gonna 
you know, if I can figure them out, um, I think I'll be able to fish deep like I like I like to do. Um, a few things that come to mind, one being I'd probably be throwing a Dobbins Champion Extreme 764, um, braided line, Gamma Torque braid with either eight, 8 or 10 pound, probably 8 pound fluorocarbon, Gamma Edge fluorocarbon leader with a Rains, 4 inch Rains Fat Rock 5 Shad swim bait. Something I do a lot of up here, fishing it on a jig head, 3 eighth, half ounce, um, and just slow rolling it either on the bottom or, or on the top of brush piles and stuff like that. Maybe even throw like a uh, Punisher head spinner with it. Uh, I know that fish head spin style, it, it can be good there. So uh, we'll be looking to do that because they got blue back herring in there. So uh, trying to match the hatch. Um, but I know a jig bite is going to be a big deal. So, you know, I might, I might you know, have a, a Punisher hair jig tied on. Uh, probably something they don't see a whole lot. But also, I mean, shaky head's a staple down there, so a uh, five-inch rain's bubbling shaker worm on a, uh, on a custom cast lures, uh, uh, the closer shaky head, that would be my setup for, for fishing the shaky head on like a Dobbins Champion Extreme uh, 743. Probably those three techniques, that, that stands out to me. Um, you know, maybe a jig and spoon or two. Um, and the jig, jig's going to be big, though. I mean, football jig, a casting jig around docks and stuff like that. That's uh that's pretty much in a nutshell what I got you know but I like to crank so you know there might be a crankbait or two on the deck if, if I can find uh that kind of bite and and cover water man that that would be a good compliment to to doing something deep you know and and uh, you know we'll see what happens I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right man well look we're not gonna keep any longer um just want to say Merry Christmas and uh thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks man Merry Christmas God bless and uh, hopefully I'll be talking to you soon.